to introduce Mike Rappaport, who's going to be talking about memory management bits in Arch. Yep. Thanks. Uh, so uh, it's not about new features or some great and shiny functionality or performance improvement. It's more about uh, lots of code duplication uh, all around the Arch, uh, MM, whatever. Uh, it's also about uh, the things that uh, architecture developers implement for their own architecture and don't share with other architectures. Uh, it kind of happens quite a lot and uh, some code that could be made generic uh, ends up in uh, architecture dependent parts and uh, never makes it to generic parts of the kernel. And uh, <coughs> in uh, some sense, it's about uh, architecture and memory management interface and what's in between them. So the architecture memory, arch the interface between architectures and memory management uh, can be, see, there are several parts to it. Uh, first is uh, page table manipulation primitives that every architecture implements and the generic memory management code that uses it. Uh, the memory management initialization is mostly done in uh, architecture specific uh, parts of the code. Uh, there is one thing also that is defined by the architecture is uh, memory me models and their initialization like uh, flat mem, sparse and still discontinuous mem for some of uh, uh, of some, some of the architectures. And uh, there is also memory hot plug but frankly, I don't know nothing about it, and uh, so I won't be talking about it. So let's start with a short quiz. Uh, we have uh, 25 architectures in the uh, kernel. Oops. Uh, and, uh, ev and we have uh, a simple macro static inline uh, PGD offset that uh, converts an address uh, to index to the top level of page directory. So how many definitions do we have? Uh, no. Five? No. No. <laughs> and there are another question, how, how, re how much do we really need? Yes. Uh, uh, 31. Uh, uh, please don't grab, it's not fair. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and the 28 of them are mostly identical, just like it. Plus, minus uh, spaces here and there because old code never gets spaces around pluses. And uh, x86 and ARM64 have another helper on the way that gets PGD of the MM and then converts it and then uh, calculates the offset into it. And S390, uh, they do some completely different stuff, so they're really different. Uh, now, it's not only that, uh, those old guys like P, P something index, P something uh, offset are pretty much uh, the same for every architecture that implements uh, those levels uh, that have these uh, uh, helpers. Uh, many architecture have uh, some helper for earlier location when we, that says, okay, if we got slab already initialized, we do page alloc, otherwise we are going to do mem block alloc. There are quite a few of them. And uh, another quite interesting, uh, there are like five or six identical implementation of uh, mapping of the VDSO that uh, grabs them up SAM uh, finds the pages, gets an uh, unmapped area from Vimalloc, and calls in, install special area, and then uh, releases the semaphore. Uh, uh, there are imp uh, several architectures have more around that, and probably they use uh, even better versions, but again, it co it's the code that ended up being completely architecture dependent, and they never got into, let's say, mmvdso.c. So uh, it's been some ongoing work on the cleanups. Uh, Christoph Helwig sent the uh, free init RDMM uh, cleanups. Uh, so we now have uh, six instead of 26. I did some other, uh, and we could reduce it uh, by, uh, well, substantial amount. There is still more left to do, but uh, uh, 
sometimes uh, sometimes you really can't do anything much about it. it has to remain different for different architectures because sometimes architectures do different things in the apparently simple macros or helpers like ARM likes to play with uh, its caches when it does allocation of uh, page table pages. Uh, several architectures have their own logic for managing page tables that completely different from others. <coughs> now, if, uh, if I'm trying to do some uh, change that is not really trivial, uh, it's a, a bit scary because I really have no way to test it. And sometimes when you send patch to Linux Alpha, you don't get any response out of there. Uh, nobody really looks at uh, these patches. <coughs> and uh, m some memory management related functions in the architecture code, they do things that are not strictly related to memory management, like uh, changing the state of the chassis, uh, or uh, sometimes it is related to memory management, but it's unique to an architecture that uh, updates protection of uh, memory, uh, uh, for instance, of uh, init memory at free init time, uh, free init memory time. And now, uh, that's what we have, so where, where shall we go? Uh, the page management uh, apparently is going to stay the way it is. There was an attempt by Kirill Shutemov uh, once, uh, I think two years ago, uh, he was working on five levels for x86. It never gone beyond uh, the RFC here. Uh, I think only single version was posted. And this work doesn't seem to continue. So the best we can do is to start extracting common functionality and move it to common places and uh, uh, remove uh, duplicated code in the, in the architectures and uh, do the best we have as few identical <coughs> functions as possible. Uh, the bits uh, about uh, different functionality parts that implemented, this, the same semantics uh, implemented in different ways uh, it require a bit more work, but still uh, something like MMVDSO.C makes sense that will do all the mapping with the architecture provided images for VDSO blobs. Uh, and uh, the memory initialization, well, it's uh, a bit of pain because uh, it evolved as it evolved and it does really interesting things. And, and as a, a, a side topic a bit, it's also in a way related to the memory management initialization. We have three memory models. Uh, we have flat mem, the simplest and uh, the most efficient one. We have the sparse mem that is most widely, widely used by m most active architectures. And we still have couple that uh, depend on discontinuous memory. And uh, uh, although it seemed not that difficult to switch most of them to sparse, uh, still there are some issues. Uh, for instance, uh, IA64 for some reason requires discontinuous memory to enable sparse mem or in order to use their own version of uh, VMEM map. Uh, I didn't dig enough to understand what is going on there, but there are a lot of dependencies of different pieces of uh, node allocation and uh, memory map allocation inside, buried deep inside IA64, so uh, it won't be an easy one. Well, Alpha again, uh, nobody cares. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, ARC, actually the most interesting one, they use uh, discontinuous mem to have high memory below the low memory. They define, uh, they have a node with a low memory that sits in the high physical addresses and another node with a high memory that sits at low physical addresses. And since the low memory addresses node is optional, that's what they use and that's what they have to use in a way. 
and there is some comment in the code that says sparse is not as efficient as discontinuous, so we stick with that. And uh, I've tried to send a patch to their mailing list, and nobody cares. <laughs> uh, now, uh, MIPS, actually, there is some progress here. Uh, discontinuous memory is used only on SGI origin machines. Anybody have one? Uh, and I actually found a guy who does have one such machine, so we are getting kernel, kernel panics and uh, trying to debug it. So probably we'll do, we'll do it uh, pretty soon. Now for M68, it's quite the opposite of the alpha because uh, the list is really responsive and uh, I even get, uh, okay, I've tested, in, uh, tested the, your patches on my Amiga, real hardware, but it doesn't work. And uh, uh, the problem with M68, uh, it is not difficult to implement sparse, but uh, the trouble is uh, I have uh, no enough definitions of the existing hardware to understand what the section size must be because uh, it's hard, it's, it's static defined and uh, if I do section that is too large, I will get huge hole in the memory map and if I do sections that is too small, I don't have enough place in the page flux. So we are working on it. I hoped actually that Geert will be here, but uh, he, I didn't see him. Uh, now the actually initialization of the memory management, uh, most of the non-generic code is uh, split between these two functions, four functions. Uh, setup arch does most of the heavy lifting. It could be like 200 lines totals for hexagon or NEOS 2. And uh, if you look at x86 or power, it's quite a lot of codes that's going on there. And uh, uh, it does many things. I'll uh, talk about it a bit later. Next callback from the main start kernel function into the architecture that is related to memory management initialization is meminit that the only initialization it does, it actually starts up the page allocator. It gets all the pages that were previously registered with memblock and uh, puts them on the free lists. So there is a call to a memblock free all and uh, some surrounding functionalities that might not be necessarily related. A free init Free init or dmem is simple, it frees inter the memory, uh, and the uh, free init mem uh, frees the memory in init sections. Uh, so now we are going through the details, and uh, free init or dmem is the easiest one. We have only six of them left in the mem tree, so in the 5 4, there will be six of them. Uh, is the difference is between existing implementations and the generic one is uh, for ARM and x86. Uh, ARM, have its, ARM has its own magic uh, for alignment of init RD areas for some reason. And it is different from other architectures and uh, if we change it, we'll probably break some platforms. So it is going to remain this way. Now ARM64 calls memblock free for the whole mem for the whole init RD area, and it's the only architecture that does it. Although there are other architectures that retain memblock for the runtime, but still they don't care. So I'm not sure is is it bug in ARM64 or is it bug in power that doesn't call it. Uh, if if anybody can say why ARM64 does call memblock free. In, in, in free init RD, uh, I, I'd appreciate the feedback, but I tried to track uh, through the code to see if memblock reserved areas are really used anywhere in, in runtime, and I couldn't find, couldn't find anything. And x86 uh, has its own way to deal with memory protections because of security and everything, so, uh, it does uh, some calls to internal x86, generic implementation of memory protection changes. 
uh, the free init mem uh, has a lot of things that are not strictly necessary to free in init memory, but since it's the last point that uh, generic start kernel calls to the architecture code, uh, the all, almost uh, in every remaining place uh, they are used to do some final initialization things like LED or memory protection <coughs> or change some uh, variable that uh, says, okay, from our perspective, we've done the boot. Is so probably it could be something like that with a new architecture specific hook uh, that <coughs> that uh, actually says okay we've done we've done the boot uh, let's uh, let's do whatever we need for for this part and actually the this one uh, could be pushed into this one because there is only one architecture that implements PTI finalized. Uh, and even sub architecture that implements PTI finalized. Yeah, I think I mix some. Uh, okay. And now, set apart does most of the heavy lifting. Uh, First, it reserves uh, the areas uh, used by kernel in ETRD uh, firmware, uh, some physical regions that are known to be not usable as normal system RAM. Uh, then, and it's the first two are quite intermixed. It reserves the text. The text reserves, depending on the architecture, it could be really weird sequence of reserve, reserve, detect. Okay, resolved again, then unreserved, then okay, uh, we have mice, uh, a bit more memory, we are going to, to, to see where it is going. And uh, in the end of uh, detection and reservation, we get uh, a NUMA topology, we get uh, a mem block uh, memory filled with memory banks uh, to some extent. And uh, we have mem block reserved for the areas that should not be touched by a kernel. Next thing, what's done during the setup arch time, what was once paging in it, well, along 2.0, I think, uh, uh, it, it creates the kernel page tables for the linear map. Pretty much the same in every architecture. Of course, it's done differently because every architecture has its own way to define page tables, and uh, some has weird, uh, weird, weird games with caches and uh, kind of things like that. But in the end, by the time setup arch finishes, uh, the direct map is ready for use, and also during setup arch. Uh, we initialize a memory map and struct page uh, arrays. Uh, it's also done, uh, it's also usually spread around uh, the whole uh, set of calls to uh, memory, to, uh, in the whole set of calls inside setup arch, like no detection comes before memory detection or after memory detection and then we do some uh, okay we know this is memory but we don't know yet what node it belongs to uh, probably we do uh, so let's change it and it goes in some rounds in the end but in the end um, the nodes and the and the memory maps are initialized and another thing that's done is calculation of uh, zone limits and passing the zone limits to the generic memory management so that uh, it, will, uh, able, it will be able to bootstrap page allocator. <coughs> and uh, another <laughs> piece of memory initialization is uh, my minute. So, for the most part, it gives page to page gives pages to the back page allocator, and after it, it's finished, actually you can you can do alloc page and set up k malloc and everything. 
Uh, some architectures set uh, the maximal PFN of mapped memory and uh, the minimal PFN of high memory. Uh, all of them do print like we have that much of memory and that's, that's how it's used. And uh, since again it's a uh, last time hook for the architecture specific call from the generic start kernel, uh, different architectures do different things. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, lar the larger the architecture is, the more things they usually do. <coughs> so uh, it's a big, big, a bit larger context uh, how this all happens. Uh, we have the printing of the nice Linux version and so on. Then it goes through set of parts to set up whatever set of parts does, including, of course, the uh, memory parts. Uh, by the time set apart finishes, uh, the kernel presumes that all NUMA topology is detected and uh, it is aware of uh, NUMA topology to properly build as a zone list. Uh, then it calls to this function, which is called page alloc init. Uh, what do you think it does? Nobody? Well, probably you thought it initializes page allocator, but no. <laughs> it's the initialization of a CPU hot plug callbacks of page allocator. And anyway, in the, after some additional calls that are not strictly related to memory management, we call a mem init that calls inside it the mem init of the architecture. Actually, I don't know why meminit is still called meminit because it doesn't do meminit, but uh, whatever. So for my future work uh, on this topic, I had several assumptions uh, that uh, are pretty much necessary. Uh, and if something of it doesn't really hold, uh, uh, the refactoring I'm planning won't go. But uh, as far as I could tell, from looking at all the 25 architectures and what are they doing. It seems to be the case. So uh, we, what, what we, what we are doing here is that we need to make sure that memory detection for the, for every architecture pretty much is uh, about conversion of uh, its internal, uh, of uh, the memory bank information the firmware passes to the kernel into mem block memory uh, arrays. And if there are too many banks, uh, we have an OBS to increase these arrays. Uh, so the static mem block arrays won't have, so the, the, you, nobody would need to do allocation when you do mem block add for your memory. Uh, that in, uh, it is possible to detect NUMA topology really early and it doesn't depend on many things that are going on uh, and happening uh, during setup arc. And uh, the last one, I don't, I wasn't been able to verify it for real, but it seems to be the case that nobody uses struct page before page allocator is really up and running, like before mem block free all. And then you have concerns, I think. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> we are going to find out. Oops. Uh, it's so uh, what I was thinking to do, I really hope to have something done by now, but uh, it didn't work out in the end. Uh, my idea was to move uh, the memory detection and the NUMA topology detection before set apart to explicit uh, callback so that every architecture will have to explicitly implement them and not to have them as a part of set up arch so it will be clearer and clearer and uh, if it makes set up arch more clear and it makes memory detection more clear. <clears throat> now, if an architecture can have way many memory banks uh, that uh, cannot fit in a statically preallocated block memory array, 
uh, we already have an architecture knob to increase this, uh, like kconfig knob to increase this array thanks to ARD. Uh, the uh, mem block size uh, can be defined by architectures and uh, we can do the same for memory pretty much like we do now for the reserved areas. And uh, the memory map initialization can be moved completely to a generic code uh, for at least for the architectures that have mem block node mappings at the moment, but uh, my idea was to make all of it, uh, all of this code available for architectures that don't have a second node, like any non-NUM architecture doesn't have mem block node mapping defined, but they have only block node zero, so it shouldn't be a problem. And the uh, things like sparse in it uh, could be again fold inside the generic initialization of uh, memory maps. Now the part when the architecture calculates its own limits uh, need to remain in some way, but uh, <coughs> the code uh, that uh, the code that is called from free area, free area init nodes, it takes into consideration the highest PFN for highest possible PFN for each node and actual uh, actual PFNs for that node in the mem block. So uh, it can call back into the architecture to ask what is the highest possible PFN for each zone and it's pretty much hardware constraint uh, because the architecture doesn't know about movable and, every, and device and everything. So okay we know DMA zone ends here and it's always and it's here. My, it has to be the last PFN in DMA, whatever happens. DMA32 is the same. All the rest except high memory goes to normal and the uh, high memory is high memory again. It's architectural li limit for the physical address that can be mapped in the direct map. So there is no need to calculate uh, zone limits 25 times. <coughs> And uh, to do the things architectures do in the MEM init that are not really a MEM init, we can add explicit callback again. So for the first part, it would be something like that. We can start by shading on the names, but probably we'll postpone it until later. Uh, early reserve memory should <coughs> come before detect memory because detect memory might start allocating MEM block and then you can uh, step on the reserved areas. Uh, detect memory does conversion from, uh, actually this is pretty much what happens already on uh, DT architectures, especially those that call uh, FDT in it from their assembly code. So by the time setup R starts, the memory nodes of uh, device tree are already parsed and the uh, mem block is already initially set up. No. Uh, and the MM init can have arch pre MM init to, to do the things architecture must do before actually transferring pages from mem block to page allocator. And uh, then mem up init instead of uh, mem init that will initialize the node structures and the <coughs> memory maps for the selected <coughs> memory model. And then we can print the how many memory we have uh, from main. It's not really necessary to be 25 times repeated in every architecture. And, uh, and just before the KMM cache in it, we have to initialize a page allocator. So these are pretty much these two guys that already exist. Mostly, this one exists uh, several times. This one is only one, but everybody calls it. So, uh, again, here we print something about memory initialization. Will it be zero, or not zero, or free on alloc, etc., etc. We can print the uh, amount of memory in the same place. It's not really a problem. And uh, in the end of the whole thing, we can do 
a post MMA need hook for architectures to do something that we should do when uh, they see that uh, memory management is in it, like change protections or re-enable caches or whatever they want to, they need to have. And uh, again, PTI init go, can go on there. I, I think even both these guys are not really available on 24 architectures. So that's more or less covers everything I had. As I said, I don't know much about hot plugs, so it's a bit out of my scope. And I've seen people are working hard to make it better. Uh, there are a couple of uh, SUSE and Reddit guys uh, doing uh, hot plug work. And uh, this one, I, again, nobody cares. Anyway, uh, the, there are some things that make uh, the whole process a bit difficult. Uh, so, as I said, if I send the uh, RFT, RFC to less active architectures, I don't know what's actually going to happen with these patches. And there is no way the patches could go through architecture trees, so it's all uh, will end up in Andrew's uh, inbox, apparently. Uh, the changes for the non-trivial changes are really scary because even I, if I think I understand what's going on there, I have no way to verify uh, anything beyond cross-compilation. Uh, if with all due respect to KMU and uh, TCG, uh, there are things that it doesn't do and uh, there are things that I cannot check with the existing QMU and I won't be having enough time to implement NUMA for Alpha or add the ARC architecture to QMU support. Uh, so uh, unless uh, there are people who are willing to test and verify that changes are okay for their architecture, uh, I can't make a progress there. And uh, the, the case of architecture developers pushing into their own Arch code because it's sometimes easier uh, and uh, do not try to see, oh, maybe these guys also do the same thing, it still remains, <laughs> it still remains a consideration uh, and uh, probably the, the things will evolve from there. From there, the things will evolve faster, than I will be able to do the cleanups. So it could be a bit of uh, difficulty here. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much all I had. Yeah. Uh, please stand up and identify yourself, if you would. Okay, uh, Pasha. Uh, so, uh, Mike, uh, I have actually a couple of questions to you. Uh, so, have you identified uh, what uh, memory models you think like uh, is, are, is going to be easiest to remove, and um, is that actually doable? Well, Sparzen is the most widely used. So no way we could remove it. Well, yes, that, that's okay. the default one. That's the one that we uh, should now, be. Now, uh, Flatmem is, I suppose it's here to stay because of the smaller architectures that don't need uh, nothing complex and uh, sophisticated, just flat memory map. The only thing about flat mem is probably moving ARM specific parts that freeze a hole in memory map to a generic code so it can be used, for instance, by M68 or some other smaller architectures. And discontinuous memory it shouldn't be too hard to remove, except probably IA64, but it's really hard uh, to find uh, a way to test it. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing that uh, I wanted to ask you, have you looked into uh, PFN wallet? It's another hook which uh, is assumed to be fast, but it's slow in some architectures, and it's also implemented by every single architecture. Not really. I presume the architecture know what it does, but uh, you mean ARM64 is slow because of memblock? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, some architectures presume that the most memory between start and end PFN is valid. Mm -hmm. For ARM, it's not really the case. So they have to do their own magic because the, not the entire DRAM is valid memory from kernel perspective. Exactly. And uh, probably you should talk to ARM people how to make this faster. 
Okay. Um, another thing is that um, uh, so the, we have two different ways to initialize uh, memory map during boot. It's we either do it earlier or we do it um, I with deferred uh, initialization. And um, I think uh, we eventually we could enable deferred to be the default because there is um, no reason to have it in two like in two different places. There is no drawbacks in doing it always later, except that it's less stable. And uh, <laughs> we could. I remember there were some problems on other architectures than x86. Uh, probably they all got fixed. I think ARM Power had issues with that at the, some time ago. Uh, probably were already fixed. I don't remember. So if there are issues, they should be fixed. But, uh, uh, we first of all, uh, first of all, we need to make. Uh, spars available for everybody. And uh, it's kind of unrelated uh, if other architectures would like deferred or what wouldn't like deferred. And probably for smaller machines, uh, deferred memory management in uh, page in initialization doesn't make a lot of sense. What do you mean? Ted? Sorry. We'll take it offline? Yeah. Um, hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Mark Rodden, um, um, for the NSRD thing, as far as I'm aware, from my knowledge and having looked at the code just now, uh, we reserve the NSRD area mem block reserve dynamically and we free it later on to make sure it can be reallocated so it gets removed off the mem block reserve list. So as far as I'm aware, that's correct. Um, so if you're missing that on power, it's probably just remaining reserved and not being uh, given to the Most page probably allocator. I'll ask Michael, I've seen him somewhere, yeah. Um, a couple of other things. Um, your idea of moving some stuff before setup arch, um, you'll need hooks before that to, to, to be able to detect memory. Uh, because on ARM64, we have to go through finding the DT, mapping that, which for that to be able to, for us to be able to do that, we need to be able to have a fixed map up and running. So we need to go and create all our fixed map page tables. Once we got to the DT, we might be using memory map from DT, we might be using memory map from EFI, so we might have to go and map all the EFI data structures and go through all of that. And we might need to pass command on options to do memory limiting and other things to go through that. So there's a huge amount of work that we have to do before we even know where memory is. So I suspect that a better thing would be to split set up arch into a number of distinct phases rather than just having do, do uh, page table set up here, do memory set up here. There's, there's a lot of pre-work that we have to do that's architecture specific. Probably. <laughs> uh, can't we? Well, it, can't you do the reservation, the really early reservations before anything else is running? Um, there is some stuff we can do early, but some of the stuff you suggested doing there, we wouldn't know until we've gone and looked until at the Until you got a fixed map. Yeah, until we've Ouch. looked at the memory map, which we don't know until we've discovered if we're using so it. So probably you'll it. remain with your set of park and then you won't be implementing those. Like, uh, oh yeah, but I think uh, we might uh, But go. again, it, it splitting set of park for, for different pieces is way too architecture specific. Uh, I couldn't say I see the common pattern of doing things like, yeah. okay, you don't do your segments, x86 and slash sure. segments. So that, that has Paka and some other hardware pieces that they're going to, and I don't really know how they're related to memory, but, uh, but uh, split and set apart doesn't seem like uh, yeah. it's okay. something that's going so to fly. That, that might be worth but, an offline but, discussion. Uh, uh, not every architecture has to implement the exact callbacks, but if we have like 20 out of 25 that doing the, this instead of uh, what we have now, it will still be better. Yeah, and one last thing. Um, so for initializing the linear map or the direct map or whatever we call it, because we don't have a generic term for that, which is also another problem we should figure out. Um, on ARM64, we do this thing where we use the fixed map to go and create all our page, we use fixed map slots to go and create all our page tables, uh, which means that we go and create a set of page tables that are not active at that point in time and then flip over to them. And then suddenly everything is mapped, everything's nice. Uh, and when do you use a flip over? Um, so in set of when we go and go through uh, uh, init mem, I think, we've got a thing where we go and map all memory into this new set of page tables. We map the kernel into a new set of page uh, tables. I think it's page in init. Sorry, yes, under page init. We go and do all of that. I mean, it's all fine grained, all set up so that we can go and flip permissions later on for, um, you know, the, um, all of that is basically potentially generic because uh, it, it's not very architecture specific at all. Uh, I noticed that the risk 5 folk have gone and copied parts of that conceptually, but not all of it. And they've Actually, 
the direct map part is mostly architecture specific in many ways like uh, it, well it will be harder to extract anyway <clears throat> take a look at x86 of power sure. uh, so so what what i was thinking that paging unit remains as it mm. at least uh, for the time being and sure. uh, yeah. I, I strongly suspect there is a large amount of code that we could reuse across architectures, um, even I if there think, are constraints that vary per I architecture. I think yes, but it will be much harder than pulling the most obvious parts. Cool. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Arrangement. Um, on PowerPC at least, uh, about three quarters of what you described in the park we do before we even call start current. Uh, for a bunch of PowerPC platforms, for example, um, we pretty much have to set up the MMU just to be able to call start kernel. We have to basically create a linear mapping. Um, and so uh, PowerPC 64 has this thing called early init. Uh, which is called from the assembly and does a bucket load of what you described before we even... Somehow I had the impression that small part of it is going to... <laughs> well, it's called from head.s and then it's split somehow, I think, and it's different on 32 and 64. And it's different between processor families as well. Uh, the, but yeah, the, 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 the hash table, for example, on hash based systems is set up before we even call it. That kind of, that's all linear mapping. So, like I said to, to Mark, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. if there are constraints, there are constraints. And yeah. they, if it can be moved to generic code, so it can be moved to generic code. Now, question about this main block thing aren't we not? St by the time we free in Italy, we've stopped using mem block allocations, no? We've transferred but everything into the page allocator. I don't know, but PowerPC keeps mem block, Ben. Yeah, yeah, well, you keep, we keep it only to have a look at where the physical memory is. We don't use it as an allocator anymore because it's out of date. It's no longer uh, representative after we switch to the page alloc. Is it it? Or am I missing something here? So, okay. <laughs> I'll have to double check, but as far as I was aware, we were freeing that before we'd hand it over to the page allocator. I think we memblock free all slightly after that. But so uh, I'd have in to power, check. what it seems to be that power has the area of init RD reserved for the entire lifetime. Apparently, I'm not hundred percent sure, but it what it seems. So we're just about out of time. Maybe oh. one last Um, I, th oh, I think um, maybe there, it, it, there is some difference between the 32, uh, 32 and the 64. 32 have some high memory, and uh, maybe that's uh, simpler for the 64, uh, 64 to memory block in it. Uh, the, pen, the key pen, I, I deal with the 32 system, uh, for example, the Sky architecture, and uh, and uh, you know, uh, some use some customers want to want to use some of the memory is is sparse, and uh, they they want physical a lot of holes in in there. And uh, then when you mem memory block in it, you yeah you you are deal with the a lot of, a lot of holes. And uh, in addition to the high memory, and uh, you need to cross the different zone. That's one my. Uh, one of my very few pen, key pen things, yeah, okay. one, this one. And the second is about the fixed map. The fixed map, uh, in fact, uh, I think is only used for some of the key high memory, high memory uh, uh, atomic, uh, atomic mapping things. That's, that is enough, but uh, I think a lot, but I saw a lot of architecture use it to, to its, to some special ones and uh, put some PCI, Mapping or, or very latency things on, on the fixed mapping to deal with. But, but so I think uh, there seems a lot of historic issues to deal with. And uh, but I agree to make this make things too easy to unify together in, because this guy is a new one and uh, and uh, and we feel generic is best.
Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, any final comments, or shall we uh, end? Uh, shall we? Yeah. We shall. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's thank uh, Mike again. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Could someone close the door once uh, folks are, yep, thank you. Yep. All right, can I?